Hey, Polly, how you doing? <laughs> Good, Greg. How are you? I'm doing almost okay. Really? Yes, just almost okay because I I am loving the Totally Preventable podcast because we started it to let the community know about resources and programs that are out there. Mm -hmm. But today's guest is proof that I don't even know all the programs and, pro and services that are out there. Mm -hmm. So today we have the Middletown Outreach Department, Lori Turner. She's one of the, uh, she's the Healthy Communities Coordinator yeah. for the department. And, you know, I didn't know about this department. And I don't know if I ever... I mean, I've done work in Middletown, but... Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, we know Lori from somewhere else, and she moved, and I haven't heard from her. And, yeah, I've been curious what, what she's been up to, what yeah. she's doing. And I was starting to think, like, well, is this a program that I've been missing out on for right? some time? Hmm. Well, well, we'll find out what she's up to. We sure will. Without further ado, today joining us on a Totally Preventable podcast, we have the Healthy Communities Coordinator a division of the out the new outreach program in Middletown, Lori Turner. How are you doing today, Lori? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. This is Gosh. wonderful. So happy to, to have you. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy to, um, we're excited to learn about your new position because mm -hmm. um, we know you from a different place. And now we want to learn all about what you're doing in Middletown. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, um, I'm originally from the area. And I have a background in social work and education. And previously, I was part of Newport Partnership for Families, which is a collaboration of nonprofits on the area and the island, um, kind of doing some of that systems work and bringing people together. And this new position in Middletown, some of those same skills and some same relationships and with the organizations have really um, are beneficial to this position as Middletown and Newport are so close together. And well, everyone serves the same families and uh, communities. And so it's been really great uh, place to be. Um, and it's great to work for the town and to work with all the different departments and all the great things that they have going on uh, and the schools too, like work very closely with the schools. And we can talk more about that in a minute. So. All right. I must um, correct myself. I said the outreach uh, program, and I should have said the outreach department. So since I'm correcting myself, why don't we go right into that? And can you give us a, a brief overview of Middletown's outreach department? Sure. So the mission of the department is to support the efforts and meet the needs of all community members by delivering enrichment, guidance, and wellness opportunities. Um, and the goal is to identify gaps in services for residents and work together as a community to solve those um, and fill those needs. Um, so we work to develop partnerships and change systems. Um, I provide some direct services, but really it's about working together um, and bringing people together. And it's been, it's been great. Um, so it's a little bit of social services and it's a little bit of education enrichment. Um, for kids and families too. And do you have a whole department or when you say department, is it just you? <laughs> it's just me at the <laughs> moment, but I mean, it's, we have a, we have a wonderful subcommittee that are very involved that includes um, two of their town council members, a, a, a local parents and educators. We have someone on the school committee who's part of it. And at our meetings and part of our program, you know, it, it really is a, it's really a big, Big group of people. Um, the superintendent, uh, assistant superintendent Michelle Fonseca is often there and involved in some of her programs. We all work together on these programs. Um, and East Bay Community Action is very involved in our after school enrichment. Yeah, so they're often at our meetings too and 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 really part of everything. So it's it's a group. Sounds a lot like a coalition, like a prevention coalition. <laughs> very similar. Similar, yes. So can you tell us um, some ways that you might support residents, Middletown residents directly? Sure, so um, part of my time each week is spent at the library. So Wednesday mornings from 10 to 12, I'm at the library for community open hours in the uh, conference room up front and we have signs and, and we're gonna try to get the word out some more this, this fall about that too. Um, but it's a place for residents to come in, ask questions about 
services or share their needs and see if I can connect them to somebody who's already um, providing those services. It can be pretty daunting when um, you don't know where to turn or you're up down on hold if you call a place or you don't, you know, you call a place and you find out they don't help you and, you know, you don't find out where else can. So uh, it's a one place that they can come in and see somebody in person and try to help them get connected to, to what's available out there. To those residents, uh, I'm, I'm sure that there are all types of needs that they, they may come in looking for. What are some examples of of the support that you, you provide to residents? Sure, so recently somebody had has been in contact with me who has low vision. She's an older older resident um, and her husband used to uh, bring her to the grocery store and he's no longer able to. And so she didn't know, she doesn't have family in the area. Uh, so she was, somebody gave her my number and um, so I've been working with her and trying to find the resources that are out there. So some of it's a lot of research and uh, calling places and and trying to figure that out. And so um, sometimes some of these things that you feel could be easy are not always easy. Uh, so uh, we're excited to get the ball rolling for her and to get her uh, what she needs. And then in the winter, it turned you know a lot of a lot of housing related calls have come in through the winter. And we've worked really closely with the housing hotline to support residents to get them needs met the best way um, available and to get them part of the coordinated entry system and um, housing um, rent relief possible and uh, working with all sorts of organizations together on, on those areas. I have uh, not heard, previously I had not heard of the coordinated housing system. And then the last few podcasts mm -hmm. and meetings that I've been in have been really talking about it. I mean, I heard it once on, on the podcast. And now mm -hmm. I've heard it probably at least once a day for the last two weeks. Yeah. I've heard about it. I'm like, wow, something I never even knew existed. Now I'm seeing how intricate it is and, and how involved it is in, the, in our community. So I hope it's helpful for unhoused residents and not just a, another step, but I'm hoping. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of steps. <laughs> yeah, there, well, there's obviously a shortage. And um, I think the goal is to try to help people with the most needs and um, get them what they need. But um, I'm excited because Middletown is working towards developing more housing. And there's, there's quite a few um, housing developments in the, in the works and it's discussed in meetings and, and town council meetings so um you know there's there will be more options local options that are more affordable it's just going to take a couple of years to get everything up and running so great to hear yeah. great things take time have you had a chance to identify middletown's biggest needs mm -hmm. so there was a survey done prior to my um coming on board uh that that was a survey of residents and, and what they were looking for and what their needs were. And a few areas were identified. Housing obviously was one of them. Also, um, there was a food access issue that was identified. Uh, you know, we think that um, we have food, we have really wonderful food access organizations and food pantries in the area, but honestly, there's none in Middletown. Uh, so uh, some of the residents, you know, not everyone can get to the places that are available. Uh, and then there's also a growing uh, English language learner population in the schools and in town and that, you know, uh, just getting that greater access uh, for residents to have things in their languages, um, both in the schools and the community is, is something that we are working towards, too. I did not know there was an entry. Yeah, I know. There's one at the Martin Luther King Center, which is really wonderful, of course, and uh, there's one at EPCAP, and there's a couple of church ones in, in uh, Portsmouth, yeah, but nothing quite in our area, and and it's not super far, but for the people who maybe don't have access to transportation or would need to uh, get groceries onto the bus or some other way, um, it's just another barrier that makes it hard. One of the things that uh, I loved about when we created the podcast, we wanted to 
help the community know all the different services and programs that are out there. But every podcast, I'm learning more and more about what the community actually has and doesn't have. Like not knowing that, you know, there wasn't a food pantry in, in Middletown is quite alarming to myself. Like I, I feel yeah. like I, I should have known that, but. I think we were originally frustrated that there were all these services out there that people didn't know about. And how could you not know about them? And then I'm equally frustrated yeah. with us because we don't know a lot <laughs> about the services either. Or or we thought we thought we did, but there's so many more services or services that we're lacking. So this is a learning opportunity for everybody. Yes. <laughs> so Lori, can you tell us how you work together with uh, local agencies and, and other organizations? Yeah, sure. Um, as you know, as I've already kind of alluded to, we work really closely together in terms of um, referring individuals to different services and needs. And I think part of it is me just reaching out and getting to know uh, new organizations and getting to know the individuals who I can call if I have a question, uh, you know, or a certain specific case so that I don't have to go through the whole process. Um, it's always great to have a contact right, at, at all these different places. And so we're working together on on developing relationships and learning about their services and then also, you know, talking about creating new opportunities or filling those gaps. Um, and so there's some other exciting things that are in the works in that area. Um, and then also I just wanted to share that the town, um, the town of Middletown, uh, the, the town council also designates funds every year for civic appropriations to local nonprofits and um, community organizations that are serving residents. Um, and last year they gave $300,000 away uh, to local groups. And so it's just another way that the town is supporting residents locally by supporting these groups that are, that are also direct service organizations. Has there been any resource um, that, that's come up that even maybe surprised you something that you know was like oh I didn't I didn't even think about that yeah I would say I'm um, just thinking uh, I didn't think about that question before but just thinking about it now I think some of the churches have um like St. Paul St. Vincent de Paul Society you know sometimes can provide additional support uh there's local organizations that that's one of the great things that I've I've gotten to do in those last years is meet some of these civic organizations or churches and like people want to get involved. So not only churches or the Middletown Rotary or the Newport Kiwanis Club, but also individual members. So like, tell us what the needs are, how can we help? And so I think that's been really neat uh, to get uh, just kind of on an individual basis and uh, also like just civic groups that are ready to step in and, and fill those needs too. Mm -hmm. and, and provide maybe relationships in a way that you don't so much with professional organizations or in a job setting. Yeah. So have you developed any programs to help individuals or anyone in Yeah. So yeah, we've, we've made some progress in these areas. We're really working closely or um, the school department really, I've been working really closely with Megan Meinzer and she's, she's taken on and she's also very involved in, um, reaching out to the students' families, especially our ELL students and um, some of our homeless families, that that's kind of her niche at the school department. She does a million things there, so mm -hmm. she's wonderful. Uh, but uh, we are working together because we both were working on this food access issue and uh, met with the MLK Center and we're really excited to say that uh, they are opening a food pantry at the high school in Middletown High School this fall and Megan's taking that on and that'll be open for for families and students and we hope eventually um, open to the general public in the evenings on occasion uh, once we get up and running. So That's terrific. I did work within a school um, a few years ago and the amount of kids that don't have lunch with them or have lunch money or their families haven't filled out the free or reduced lunch program because it seems overwhelming or they don't want to share the information or they just don't know how to do it is um unbelievable it's overwhelming and how do we expect these kids to learn if they're hungry and worrying about what they're going to eat and i'm guessing there's not much to eat at home either if this is the issue at lunchtime 
Right. And we know from statistics and studies that, you know, if you have any in breakfast, you're not as attentive during the school day, you're not going to do as well. Um, so really, you know, we have to feed our body, mind and soul, you know, to to be effective. And so I think this food pantry is going to be a, a good step to to making that happen for local families. Can you tell us about the work the town's outreach committee uh, wishes to accomplish with the department to support student success? Yeah, so originally the department was really focused on students and it kind of expanded as we realized, you know, there's there's a lot actually happening at the schools already. Um, and then there's some of these gaps in the town, but we really are focusing on on students just having additional enrichment opportunities after school, being exposed to different careers, um, having support, like filling out the FAFSA form, which is for the college aid and and having career fairs and job summer job fairs and so they're very interested and excited about all of those areas and, and like I mentioned before like you know Michelle Fonseca is often at our meetings and in a part of the planning process and I work also we work together with the principals to say what are your needs um, what what how can we help you uh, you know fill some of those gaps instead of me saying hey we're going to do this program and so uh, we're working with a high school on some some things this fall. We're excited about uh, that, um, you know, what can help maybe with some of those social, emotional skills and needs and supports for students uh, that will offer during the school day. So does this tie into the Governor's Learn 365 initiative? Are you part of that? I am. Yes. <laughs> you're you're part of that Greg is this the wait uh, let's see I'm part of the learn to read by 3g oh great oh, oh related though related sounds related Let, let's see okay. <laughs> let's see I I think it's definitely related related so the governor has this learn 365 initiative that he and um and bailed I think this spring, and so we are really excited. It was, uh, he has three metrics that he's focusing on, uh, increasing student attendance, and increasing student scores, the RICAS scores, and increasing FAFSA completion, which is for the, to college aid. Um, and so there was some money available to districts, actually to towns, municipalities, and cities to collaborate with after school providers, with the school department, with all sorts of different lo local libraries, all sorts of different people who are working together to support students because he, he recognizes as we all do that it takes more than just um, the teachers and the school district to, to help students, right? We all need to work together as communities to help students to support them and to help them grow. And so we were one of nine communities to receive the expanded grant. So we received just over $200,000 to support our students. And we're excited about that. And we're focusing on attendance, increasing attendance and providing some additional funds for our summer beyond the bell program next year. We have students attend, they have fun, exciting enrichment opportunities and they have some tutoring during the day and it's just a great program for students to continue to learn during the summer or to catch up uh, and for those yeah. students who, who may need some extra help or need some support. Mm -hmm. Can I do a shameless plug right here? Do you know about Laundry Love? Yes, okay. I do know that's, about Laundry that's Love. That's a good, um, a good resource for maybe kids that might be missing school because of any kind of laundry issues, so. Yes, we've shared that. Megan, I know, has that flyer, shared it with her, and uh, we are going to pass it. If the if the social work, I'm pretty sure the social workers at the schools already have it, but we can definitely post that online and uh, have that resource available for people. Okay. It's a great, it's a great opportunity. I think everyone knows about it, but, you know, if you don't chat about it, then no one's going to know. So. Yeah. Like me not knowing about the three learn 365. Is that not like the learn? it is not the, no. the, the, the sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to be a part of it, but uh, so what are some upcoming projects and programs that, that you have planned? We're really excited to start a municipal youth council. 
it is an opportunity for students to gain some leadership skills and to be involved in some community service projects and get their community service um, requirement met through, uh, as which is a gra graduation requirement. And then also just to be involved and learn more about local government and get to meet a lot of different people. We're excited to bring in some guest speakers and to work on projects together. Um, things that are in, of interest to the, the students, you know, what do they, what do they see as local needs and how do they want to help solve them and, and really work together to, to create something. And this is our first year and it's going to be exciting and, and we're looking to get, you know, probably between 10 and 20 students enrolled and some of the other schools in uh, uh, districts have also similar programs involved And North Providence has a gigantic municipal youth Council and Smithfield and also Cumberland and we're kind of working with them a little bit to learn more and and to see how uh, how much it's impacted their students and so uh, we're really excited about that mm -hmm. um, and also another project that we're working towards is um, with the Norman Bird Sanctuary and Salve Regina we're just looking to expand opportunities for students after school um, to do an after school program for some of our younger students, probably elementary, uh, middle middle school students. And then there's also lots happening after school uh, with the Beyond the Bell program, which is through the Middletown Public Schools and East Bay Community Action. They, they do really great, offer, great, great stuff with our students um, to help them learn and to grow and have extra support that way. And just to uh, explore, you know, lots of different things that are of interest to them. That that's is great. great. That great. youth council, that's going to be huge because once I love that idea. I think it's great because now you're you're putting teens who are almost going to be, if they're not already at that voting age, you're giving them the tools to not only research who they may be voting for, mm -hmm. but also to read up on the different laws or bills that are about to be passed. And once you get one bill, one when they come up with that idea and they can, you know, present that mm -hmm. that bill ever becomes law or something like that it's going to spread like wildfire. It's going to be, it's going to be huge. So yeah, that's that's amazing. Great job. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited too because, um, you know, this is I've mostly been in education and nonprofit before this, really mostly nonprofit, but you know, to be on the government side and to see how local government works on the inside and to see how much you know residents can have a voice in local local decisions. Uh, not everyone realizes that or not everyone has the ability to get involved, but how important and how vital it can be mm -hmm. to make changes or to to support what you're interested in and, and what's best for the town. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for the students to see that side of things. Yeah, me too. I'm um, an Islander, I'm class of 89. So we didn't have that one back then. <laughs> <laughs> we still had a courtyard that Kids were allowed to smoke in, so wow. we've come a long way. <laughs> Baby. We've come a long way. That's great. Um, so if there's some people listening that are interested in finding out what the um, outreach department is up to, where can they check in? Yeah, the first place I would say just to keep up on everything Middletown related, because there's a lot of other departments. I mean, we all work together, but everyone's doing great stuff. Um, I would follow the town on our social media, which is Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. And they they do a lot of press releases, and you can just go to our town website and and get those updates. And then also, I'm going to be starting a newsletter for families that are interested and others that are interested in finding out what's happening directly in the department. And you can go to our website, middletownri.com, and find the outreach department under the town departments to learn to sign up, or you can email me directly at lturner at middletownri.com and we'll get you signed up for our newsletter. Um, so there will be lots of, you know, new programs out there for students and others, uh, other events and things that, you know, are open to the whole community. That, you know, we just want to bring people together, especially after COVID. Um, so I think it's really great to, to have opportunities like that. All right. That's terrific. Well, you heard it here. Lori's got in this department and has been running ever since, <laughs> doing a lot of great things. And I know, I know, you know, I, I just want to say a big thank you. I, I know you had to take some time out to to do this and be with us and share this great information, but I really want to 
say that we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. And we're really excited that your interest and for your listeners to learn more about us. And, and again, it is a group effort, definitely a group effort. Um, so thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Great to hear from you.